I know. Oh shit, I saw Skyfall. I saw Skyfall now. You know, now chill out. <laughs> Sorry. I'm just kidding. Uh, basically, that was just me having fun. I know, seriously, a lot of people were asking me my opinion on Skyfall. A lot of people wanted to my opinion of the new James Bond film, Skyfall. Directed by Sam Mendes, who did American Beauty and Road to Perdition. Which I haven't seen those, but I know of those films. I know what those films are about. And, like, even not that long ago, talking with folks, like, even on uh, the Dead Pit Blood TV, someone was asking, I was on there, and someone was asking, hey, have you seen Skyfall? You don't see Skyfall? I'm like, ah, I don't know. I'm not sure. Probably not. No, I'm not going to see it. And then the more I thought about it, a lot of people were asking my opinion. I'm like, okay, you know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to see the film. And I also saw another film. So, saw Skyfall. It's a new James Bond film, of course, and James Bond is not really a character I grew up with. Uh, I couldn't really give a good opinion on the previous James Bond films, like the Sean Connery, Roger Moore, and Tim Lee because I haven't seen those. A lot of those films I haven't seen. I've seen clips of them. I've seen, you know, I know enough about them, but I haven't really seen them all beginning to end, and I don't own them. The only ones I own are the Pierce Brosnan ones and the Daniel Craig ones, mainly because uh, financial. <laughs> It'd be a lot of money to get all the James Bond films. But I can say Pierce Brosnan, I love GoldenEye. GoldenEye will probably always be my favorite. I enjoy Tomorrow Never Dies, but I'm not a big fan of Dying Another Day. I'm not a big fan of The World Is Not Enough. And I like Casino Royale a lot. Chrome Solas I like, but I will say the editing and the plot are the problems with the film, but I like Chrome Solas. I know there's a good guy on here, Wild Man Beyond, who absolutely hates the Daniel Craig James Bond films. And, you know, I gotta disagree with them. I, I really like them. I thought because James Bond is funny, he's charming, and he's badass. He gets a lot of ass. That's why I like James Bond. He's he's funny, he's badass, he He's a badass motherfucker. He kicks ass. He knows how to fight. He knows how to shoot. And Daniel Craig does a great job. So, and the action scenes are great. So, that's that's why I, I like these new James Bond films. But uh, this film, I know it's about. Well, of course, I know it's about. I just saw it. But I know a lot of people enjoy the film, and I did like the film. I will say, I liked Skyfall. Only problem I have really is the length. The film is way over two hours long, and I think it's way over long. I don't think it need to be that long. I think there's certain spaces between the action scenes a little bit too long. The little bit of things could have been cut out, snipped out. That's just my opinion. But uh, other than that, I wouldn't say this is the best James Bond film. I mean, I'd probably say I like Casino Royale better. And or GoldenEye Tomorrow Never Dies better, but I can say it's better than Quantum of Solace. I can say that. James Bond is with this person, partner. They want to get this disc because this disc will... They have people undercover and it will tell who those people are. Give out their real identities. So they need the disc and you have this really exciting action scene. That takes place first in a car, then on a motorcycle, then on a train. And even James Bond like gets this construction vehicle that smashes these cars and the train gets unbuckled. And James Bond actually grabs the roof of the other train with this construction vehicle and just does like this. Takes the whole fucking roof out, climbs up and jumps in. I thought that was really cool. Really well done. A lot less shaky cam than Quantum Solis. That was the problem I had with Quantum Solis. was a shaky cam, but not so much here. And it's a good-looking movie. Uh, the plot was interesting. That was an interesting plot. I thought it was a good plot. The bad guy is Javier Bardem, who's the bad guy in No Country for Old Men. He was a great bad guy in here. He comes in about over an hour into the movie, which is strange because he's the main villain. But when he's there, he really makes an impact. 
his character had worked with M, Judy Dench's character. He was an agent, but he was doing some stuff on the side. One thing led, led to another, he got captured, and... Well, more like there had to be a switch. And he felt like he was betrayed. He was beaten up a lot. He had to take, like, a cyanide pill. And that fucked up, so it, like, burned his, like, inside of his mouth, inside of his... Burned inside of him. To a point where there's a scene where he actually... You know, look what you've done. He takes this piece out, like, his face kind of deflates. I'm like, oh, shit. And then he puts it back in and strains it out. And Harvey Birdman is a, definitely a strange villain. He's a good villain. He has a good presence to him. He doesn't sound like, so cuddly, like just another movie. I thought he did. And really, this is the best villain in a long time for James Bond. Because, you know, even, I love GoldenEye, but Sean Bean, fuck Sean Bean, the Beanie Baby. Sean the Beanie Baby. Uh, the villain tomorrow never dies, and the villain and die another day. World is not enough. Casino Royale and Chrome Solace. The villains are really not that memorable. This this villain was memorable. Maybe just his performance, or like when uh, James is tied up and like Harry Bardem's like talking about him and stuff, but then does this weird thing like touching him and then touching his legs and like their the dialogue between the two. I thought it was actually pretty pretty in funny dialogue. Maybe definitely an interesting villain. Uh, and then, like, after the first action scene, it's quite a bit before another action scene pops up. Because it's like James Bond, he has to get shot, then he pretends to be dead. And then, long story short, he sees that the MI6, something's going down, so he comes back. Wants to see that M. Judy Dench is alright. And then, as things are going on, he's trying to retrain, but pretty much fails to test but he doesn't know that because you get an idea now that M really does trust James Bond he goes to Asia and looks at the sniper guy one thing about this scene that someone can who's seen the movie can explain to me why is it that James Bond has the sniper guy or this guy who is going to snipe someone why doesn't James Bond beat him up why does he wait until the guy takes the shot and kills whoever's in the next building and then go after the guy. Someone can explain that to me. Why does that happen? Why didn't he take the guy out before? You know, like punch him, kick him, whatever. But they have a pretty decent fight. Sort of in shadow and black. But I like the way it was done. And the way it's shot in, in uh, I think Hong Kong. I believe it was Hong Kong. Really well done. Love the usage of the lights and such. That was really... I, you tell that's a city you would love to visit because it's really pleasing to the eye. And Daniel Craig, I really love his performances as James Bond. He really carries them. I know there's this something in the news where he was maybe a little bit tired of playing James Bond or kind of wants out. I think it's because Casino Royale, he got a lot of death threats when he first became James Bond. He got a lot of death threats. And then everything that he does outside James Bond doesn't do well. <clears throat> Girl with Dragon Tattoo didn't do that well. Cowboys and Aliens didn't do well. Uh, Dreamhouse didn't do well. A lot of films didn't do well. So it's like, you know. But, you know, he makes a good James Bond. <clears throat> and I actually like Cowboys and Aliens. But uh, no, I didn't see Girl with Dragon Tattoo. But what really got me into the film was I thought Daniel Craig's really great. The story I thought was solid. The fact that he could pretend to be dead, but he comes back. He, his relationship between him and M. Judy Dench. It's a really good relationship. Interesting relationship. And then when the villain Javier Bardem comes in, he's really solid villain. Very memorable villain. And when the action scenes do happen, they're well done. Like you have this little action scene where kind of like a not a club like gambling place like there's like a pit where like there's these like komodos but i, I hate the fact that they use cgi in that and i was kind of i went eh, i don't know about that you know but some of the bits of action was pretty decent i do love the scene when harry bart them like 
their first meeting and then it takes outside and someone gets killed and James Bond like fucks all these guys up and catches Javier Bardem. I really like that scene. And then when he gets captured, again, the, even Harvey Bardem and his whole deal of wanting to get revenge on MI6 and wanting to get revenge on Judy Dench was a, a good plot. It was a good, you know, revenge plot. Really got me involved in the story. I thought it was handled well. I thought it was written pretty good. Not perfect, but pretty decent. Better than certain movies like Dark Knight Pisses, but that's just me. But sorry, Bardem doesn't sound like Schumacher. <laughs> sorry. <clears throat> but I really like Skyfall. I had a lot of fun with Skyfall. It is a little bit too long, but when Harry Bardem escapes, it's like nonstop action where James Bond goes after him and like Harry Bardem blows him up and a train comes through. And one thing leads to another, there's this conference that M. Judy Dench is at, and there's a big action scene in there. And then, I like this, I like certain nods. Like, sometimes in movies, it's really buzzy shit out of me, but I didn't hear. Like, the character Q is in there. But, basically just gives him a gun, a little radio transmitter, and he's like, oh, you know, so that's it? And he's like, what were you expecting, a pen that blew up? I thought that was pretty, pretty funny. And he's not in the film too much. He's in a little bit later. He's more like a computer guy. And then later on when he gets M, he has a car and it's like a 1960-some Aston Martin, which I know is an old James Bond thing. I thought, okay, I I'm, may not be the most knowledgeable of James Bond films, but I do recognize that. And... Uh, they have a fun back and forth where it um, sort of says, you know, so what are you going to do? You're going to hit the ejector seat on me or something like that? That was pretty funny. And then basically those two and this other guy at this house, which I guess is Skyfall, you need to learn a little bit about James Bond's uh, past, but not tremendous amount. Like, you know just enough. They don't dwell on it for 50 minutes, which I was glad for. And a really exciting action scene where the bad guys get upon this building and they whole place gets fucked up, there's a helicopter and a showdown, something happens there, and what makes you feel for something? Gives you, you know, makes you feel for something. I like the bit, like, the Aston Martin, like, the old school has, like, the guns that pop out, and, like, James Bond uses that bit, and certain stuff that happens. Don't want to give every single thing away. Uh, by the box, I was, I'm sure everybody's seen Skyfall. But I really liked Skyfall. I really liked the flick. Uh, would I put in my top 10 of 2012? Yeah. I, I did. The only problem I had was the, I would like a little bit more action, a little bit more between, between the first action scene and like the little stuff in there. I was like, oh, it's okay. You know, it's fine. Maybe like uh, another like really standout action in between. The first action scene, the action scene with the uh, little bit with f meeting Harvey or Bardem, but I got involved with the story. I don't know how to put it. James Bond was a badass. He wasn't a pussy like Batman <laughs> in Dark Knight Rises. That's my opinion, though. That's just my opinion. I thought Batman was a bitch, but here I thought James Bond was badass. I'm like, okay, cool. He's being badass, and I got involved with the story. It's a good-looking movie. You tell the budget was used to good effect. Daniel Craig, again, he plays a wonderful James Bond. Judy Dench is great. Uh, Ray Fiennes is in the film. His uh, bit part is nice. The little nods, that was fine. Like, you find out that the partner who accidentally shot him. And then he's like, well, I don't really want to be in the field. You find out her last name is actually Money Penny. So I'm like, oh, okay, yeah, I get that nod too. I get that. So the little nods didn't actually piss me off. I thought, and also when the Aston Martin, when they drive the Aston Martin later on, you actually have the old old school James Bond thing. Like, dun, 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 dun. I thought, okay, I get that. That's pretty funny. I, I get that. But I thought the action was well done. I thought the story was well told. There's little bits that I'm like, eh, huh? It's just, it, it's a long movie. That's my, my only problem with the film. It's a long movie. It's two, two and a half hours long. And it's just, at times it feels that way. 
But, uh, so, I will say it's better than Chroma Solace because I thought the editing was much better than it was in Chroma Solace and the plot was more understandable. It, it flowed better than Chroma Solace, but I still like Chroma Solace, but this flowed better. Casino Royale, I don't know. I, I'd probably still put Casino Royale over this. But maybe I gotta give it, like, another couple watches before I do that. But, uh, it's definitely better than World is Not Enough, but, uh, day in that day, but... I enjoy Skyfall. I really liked it, and uh, definitely has a seal of approval. So thanks for watching, and stay tuned for another review.